20 minutes later, you yeah, know, right? more than 20 minutes. Definitely harass me about that. Oh, yeah, I will. Yay, that was only 22 minutes of wasted time. All right, so what are we going to be talking about today? Yes, more depends. I know. Color theory for the web. So, trust me, if I wanted to go to the circus, I would. Don't let a clown design the color palette for your web page. <laughs> No face palming me. Completely unrelated. Christopher. No Kelly and Conley colors? <laughs> I don't know. The psychology of color <laughs> might get me enough. Right? All right. So uh, the more colors you add, the more chaotic the web page may become. Uh, colors may also convey the branding of the company, uh, may, or, may, may or may not convey the branding of your company as well as uh, have psychological uh, associations, culture associations, gender associations, all types of associations. So let's um, just quickly run through this a bit and then we'll get into making color palettes and using, I'm gonna show you how to integrate a visual design into an Illustrator document today. So uh, in terms of the influence color and color psychology, why would you want to pick one color over another? Well, the easy answer is psychological associations that we may or may not have with certain colors. For instance, red, right? Uh, we can associate red with concepts like power, energy, love, passion, aggression, or danger, okay? So if you're making a Valentine's Day website, Right, red and pink are obviously the uh, appropriate or could be appropriate associated colors because if we are going to see them in that context. We're going to think love, uh, hopefully, and that kind of stuff. Um, but if we are using red somewhere else, uh, it might be a color that will evoke aggression or danger. Or when you see red in some instances. It is kind of a jarring color at times. Again, it depends on the um, uh, the use, the environment, the environmental use of it. Like I said, is it Valentine's Day? Red and pink are, are appropriate colors. If it's not, well, maybe that might not be an appropriate color. Blue, trust, conservative, secure, clean, sorrowful, sorrowful, order. So there was a reason why when. When I was doing the Meriwether rebrand, right? Who's buzzing? Me. I just don't know. <gasps> Stop buzzing. I know. I know. <laughs> right. Again, if this was their old website colors, right? appropriate, not appropriate? Did a clown <laughs> design the sidebar? Yes. Right? So this is a perfect example of color gone wrong, let's say, or inappropriate use of color. As well, blue and orange. What do you think when you see blue and orange? Yeah. You a buy? Yeah. Microsoft. Cool. There's a big one in there, but I'm right. I'll go next. Union 76. I'm from California. Right now it's red, white, and blue. For a long time it was orange and blue. What's the number one association you have with blue and orange? Close. The goddamn Denver Broncos. Right? So as well, blue and orange are complementary colors. That doesn't mean that they're nice to each other and say, hey, nice looking color you have today. Right? That means that they're opposite colors on the color wheel. 
okay? When opposite colors on the color wheel come together, they make a chromatic gray. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. As well, they kind of vibrate when they come together. So just by having blue and orange together, it's irritating, just like the Denver Broncos. <laughs> okay, I don't have anything against the Denver Broncos, but apparently a lot of people from Seattle do. Right. Um, as well, what the hell is going on up here? And for those of you at home, why? Why? What? What's going on here? Why? Why is that photo there? What does it mean? I have no idea. Take it away. But when I was redoing this website, there was a reason why I went with blue and silver. Right? And that reason goes back to blue, trust, conservative, secure, silver, intellect, futurism, modesty, sadness, decay, elegance. Right. So I chose blue and silver for elegance and blue for conservative trust, right? They were colors that associate that you associate associate with corporatism, right? So if this was blue and orange, right? Right. I have a version of that where it's blue and orange. It was terrible. Don't make me look it up, right? Okay. You can read through these on your own, but if you want to go with fun and happiness, orange is the color for you. Okay. So think of, again, when, how we associate colors. Right. So if you are doing an ecotourism website, right, what colors may you use? Brown and green. What might be a good accent color in that? Okay. Brown and green could be the dominant colors. Okay. There could be one other color in there, and if you went with one other color, what might it be? Yeah. Yellow, right? Because green and yellow, then, are analogous colors, which go well together. Okay, we'll talk about that here in a minute. Now, you said black. Did you not say black? You didn't say black. Okay, let's pretend you did say black. Say black. How much more black could it be? None more black. Right. Uh, that was a shout out to Nicole from uh, the typography class. Right. Um, what was I saying? Black and white are not colors. Right. So black is the absence of color. White or black, excuse me, is the absence of light. White is pure light. OK. Let's go down to associations. I know I'm kind of ripping through this. Red. Now, in America, red could mean Valentine's Day, right? Again, I have Valentine's Day on the brain because when I was walking through Fred Meyer this weekend, I got hit by a big thing of candy. And I was like, God damn it, I got to buy my wife some Valentine's Day candy. And, 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 and so I did, and she was happy. Score one for Mike and Husband one. You get it to her early? I did. And I said happy. Actually, last night, the night before, I can't remember, I actually came to her and said, Your Grace, I presented her some candy. Right? I know how to talk to her. You guys, you should try it. Works out well. So, getting back to what we should be talking about red, in China, a symbol of profound good luck. Right? Red, also, hopefully, I'm not offending anybody, could be a, 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 a signature color of. Communism, right? The USSR in China. Okay. Again, I mean, no offense to 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 anybody or anything. Huh? Sure. Right. I don't want to get too. Like I said, right. Don't start getting outside of the. I'm just saying that these are these are things to be careful of. Right. Yeah. Really? Say that louder. Say that louder. They're going to die, right? In, you're saying this in China? In Korea. Okay. So that would be a good reason to avoid red. 
I should add that to the list. Okay. But pay, pay close attention to, again, the psychology of color and associations, because we do need to pick appropriate colors for the business at hand, but also uh, we don't want to, again, number one rule in web design is kind of what Tyrone was saying. You don't want to offend somebody, right? Number one rule in just design, publication design, you do not want to design something that, uh, no, no, somebody, uh, Sylvia? Okay. So getting back to what we should be talking about. Okay. So the influence of color and human emotion is a complex relationship involving numerous factors, again, psychological effects, cultural influence, and gender bias. Right? Uh, you don't want to use pink just to say girls. You don't want to use blue just to say boys any longer. Right? How many of you play the game of life or know what I'm talking about? How many of you feel like having blue for boy and pink for girl is now kind of offensive? Right? So uh, we can take a little bit, you can take a little bit more of a look here by some of those links. Okay. Now, when it comes to choosing your colors, right? Each element of the page can have a different color specific to its function on the page, but together they must be a cohesive family of colors. So here then are the major elements that we are going to apply a color to, right? Backgrounds. Background is the backdrop or canvas against which all your content and information appears. It should make an impression on the viewers and relate to the story, but not detract from the action on the stage. So if we go down to some of the examples down here, which probably don't link to the correct pages anymore, because CSS Garden, I don't know what they did, but they Guys, what you're killing me, man? It's actually I need to needed to open that in a new anyway. So if we just view all designs, um, let's just open this one because this is a decent. One. So in terms of background colors, right? Appropriate background color to the design? Sure. What is a consideration for choosing a background color that, that you learned in the typography class? Readability. Okay. So is this text contrasty enough over top of this background? Let's bring it up a little bit. So if we bring it up a little bit, is it contrasty enough over top of this background? I can either from my eyes get tired. I would get tired if it continued down the page. Okay. So I would say this is at the low end of the spectrum of contrast. Meaning, if this is dark brown, right, it has a what's the the value? Do you guys know the concept of value in color? Who's ever Xeroxed something red? And when you Xerox it, it looks black. That's what we're talking about by value. So this right here has probably 98% of black value over top of a background that's probably about a 30% value. Can, true? Ish? So that would leave a 70% uh, um, Deviation. deviation, deviation, like the standard deviation. Mm -hmm. okay. Deviation between uh, the colors for contrast. Does that make sense? So I would say that this is again at the low end. Okay. So if we go to one of your most favorite websites you've ever seen. <laughs>
I'm going to leave this up on the screen as well because I have some, another agenda with it. Contrast here in the About Us section, right? It's about an 80, 85 percent, a little bit better. So we may not want to always go with black text over a white background. So if we want to use a color in a background, we may choose to go with a very light tint of a color. So the point I have to make here is this color, this color, and this color right there were all made from the same base color. Okay. So if we look at the color palette for this website in terms of the branded color palette, not, not taking into account the full color images, how many colors is in this color palette? Two. Two. Is that making sense to you, Josh? Joss, sorry, I'll do two. Different shades of black, different shades of black. Let's say it like this. Do you think that thing is ever going to stop spinning? This is something that we're going to talk about later on. Two base colors. So when the logo is over top white, the two colors were PMS 222 and PMS 414. If the logo was over was light over dark, then it would be PMS 222 and PMS 415. Okay. So if I then Oops. Downloads. If I open this file up then, and I opened up then the purchase palette, you can see that I have the base color of Pantone 222 here plus black, Pantone 222 plus white, Pantone 415 plus black, Pantone 415 plus white. Okay, so therefore this layer right here is Pantone 415 but with 40% white added to it. This one right there, it's not opening up in there. Oh, let's go to this one. This one is Pantone 415 plus 30% black. We're going to get to that. So body text and headlines, navigation, etc. So 
uh, body text and headlines. Your text must be easy to read. Pick a color that reads well in the background you have chosen. Most often black over white or a very dark color over a very light color, right? I would stay away from white text over a black background. Why? It's hard on the eyes. The black encroaches in on the white letter forms, right? And also, uh, it's associated with your goth band from 1973. Or, excuse me, your punk rock band from 1967. One of those two, right? So it has that association. Does that make sense? You, you rarely see websites with black background and white text these days. True? It's the readability issue for number one. Black encroaches in on white, but it's also very hard on the eyes, right? Has anybody ever on their iPad chosen to read something and they've reversed it with white text over black and tried to read it? Pretty hard, okay? So most typefaces were designed for black ink and white papers. The shapes, proportions, and stroke weights of the characters must have high contrast between letter and background, right? Again, go with dark text over a light background. It doesn't always have to be black over white, but it should be almost black over almost white, right? You can, you can have that color in there, but one of the ones that I was looking for in Zen Garden, let's take a look, let's see if I can find it. This one. Let's take a look at this readability. How about up here? Right. How about down here? It's easier, but still the contrast between type and background is not up above 70%. Right? So therefore readability. So the 70% rule is one of my rules that I made up. What's the application to take a, a snippet, like a... I'm not being sarcastic. I'm actually going to answer your question here, if you'd stop talking to Dan. Oh. So if Photoshop now ever opens, you basically take the eyedropper over it, turn it black and white, take the eyedropper over it, and see what the percentage of grayscale it is. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's how you can... Do the calculation. So once Photoshop opens up, we'll we'll do that. Probably. I have not. Do not know what you're talking about. But I've used similar tools. Well, if you change it to grayscale and use the eyedropper, it should tell you the percentage of black. I think there's some way of doing it. Does that answer your question? We don't need to open it, do we? Uh, navigation. The user should be aware of navigation, but not distracted. Okay, so a non-distracting color from the palette should be used. Now that Photoshop is open.
the info palette. See where it says 36K? Over zero. So forty two. Okay. Seventy is at least. At least seventy. Does that answer your question, Chris? Chess. Chris without the R? Chess. Chess. Okay. So navigation. So if we go to let's say um, here, right? This is where the navigation up top can look like text right out of the branch of heaven. Okay, because it needs to be noticed in terms of hey, where is it? Right, but it doesn't necessarily need to be readable in terms of reading the paragraph. Okay, so this is where reversing it out of. Uh, the darker color like that, and then when you roll over it, I don't know if you can see it on the projector, but the box gets a little bit, a little bit darker. Okay. If we go to any one of these, right, using the green out of the palette, right, is a nice color, so on and so forth. Okay. So. How are we going to get a color palette together? I'll be honest with you. Creating a color palette is one of the harder things to do. It just is. Okay. But let's take a look at this uh, cheat sheet here. In different terms. Here. Traditional color's name, like red or orange. Saturation, relative strength or weakness of the color. So if we're talking, uh, again, going back to you, Chris, ecotourism, saturation, you would probably want a relatively weakly saturated color, almost more of an earth tone color versus very highly bright saturated, like a bright orange, okay? The two that we are going to explore today is taking a hue, right? So if we're talking hue and tints and shades, right here, these two colors, the 222 and the 414, again, for those of you at home, the 222 and the 414, that if we add white, we're making a tint. So this is the hue, and this is the tint of that hue. This is the hue, this is the shade of that hue. Hue, tints, hue, shade. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do this today and save the color palette. So for you guys, what I would really recommend is that, well, let's, let's do it in a second, but uh, so let's say you need to pick a few different hues. So how many colors should your color palette have? Five, you think so? At most, right? Two, three, four seem to work out, okay? So how are you going to pick a color palette? Well, there are formulas to pick. Monochromatic. So this is where monochromatic, you can see that this hue right here then has tints associated with it, okay? Or shades associated with it. So one color and then the color palette is expanded, right? Using those tints and shades where you can use those tints and shades in a hierarchy, right? Again, if we look at this, I've got three background colors. The outside background, the inside one over the text, and then the background that this, you know, for the people, I don't know why I keep on going to the projector when I'm recording. People at home, Caitlin's going to have no idea what I'm pointing at, Spangler, right? So the outside background color, the inside background color, and then the background color of the spotlight, all taken from the same hue, okay? So basically what I have here is a monochromatic color palette of two different hues, the tints and shades of two different hues. So 
it's possible that you could make a complementary color palette made from hues that are on either side of the color palette from one another. Okay? This is where, again, red and green, or blue and orange, right? Very distinctly different colors because they're on the opposite side of the color wheel. And when they come together, they clash. Blue and orange clash, really. In other words, they're two, think of the Denver Broncos, right? Very, if you look at the, the colors, Yeah, sports teams use a lot of complementary colors because they're bright and they're brash. They come together very aggressively, right? So if you're designing for a sports team, by all means, try complementary colors. You'll probably have really good luck, right? Ana analogous, okay? This is what I kind of am recommending to, to you. What time I turn my career around? You're talking to each other. About what? Uh, are you translating to him? <laughs> Orange and blue are complementary colors. They contrast. Complementary meaning they're on opposite side of the color. Not complementary like Hey, Orange, that's a nice, I like you. I like the way you're dressed today, Orange. Okay. Was that what you meant? No, what I meant was I thought earlier you said they didn't go together. Yeah. They do if you're designing that. Right. There's a place and time for everything. Red and green go together if you're designing for Christmas. Exactly. Okay. Analogous. So let's take an example, a look at an example of an analogous color scheme. So this creating consistently colorful user experiences UX booth. So again, if we look at this color wheel, right, uh, complementary or the opposites, analogous or neighbors on the same side of the color wheel. So for instance, if you're using something like this, these analogous colors. Does that look like that might be a good color palette for an ecotourism website? Possibly. Possibly not. You know, maybe having all four of them there is overkill, but having two or three of them and then maybe something on the other side of the color wheel, like, or using maybe split complementary, right? So you have two colors over here that are analogous and then something on the other side of the color wheel versus triadic using, for instance, uh, red, yellow, and blue, the primary colors, right? And you can shift that around. So if you want to see this in action, How many of you have used Cooler by Adobe? So if we go complementary, right? And then you can move the darkness in a little bit. And that's cool, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Analogous, all on the same side. Oops.
triad. So if we're going triad, red, yellow, blue, the primary colors, or in between the secondary colors, or the tertiary colors. Complementary, monochromatic, right, the, the whole tints and shades thing. I'll be honest with you, this thing right here, uh, I haven't really figured out how to use it effectively. Um, anyway, those are the different types of color palettes you may come by, right? There's also a couple other nice little links here that kind of explain, right? So again, tints, shades, tones, right? Tints, adding white to a pure hue. Shades, adding black to a pure hue. Tones, actually adding gray to a pure hue. So what you could do as well to affect this color is add kind of a warm gray or a cool gray to it, right? That's if you're really, really experimental, okay? I would stick to try some pre-formatted color palettes. So if we're here then, And we want to search palettes for eco-tourism. No results. No results. Ooh, that's a good one. Hippies. <laughs> so, if you're doing a website for hippies, this might be the color. This is where I would start. How many of you are, is anybody doing a website for cupcakes? Cupcakes, here's one of my favorite ones to, to search. So, Cupcake Anatomy, that looks pretty good, right? So it looks like some analogous and maybe, so, Split complement, split complementary, where there's analogous and then there's uh, something on the other side of the color. Okay. Um, let's go back to the hippie one. I don't like any of these very much. Uh, let's do Ocean 5, though. That looks like it's possibly a decent one in there. Um, how are we going to get this into Illustrator? Where is it? They've moved the... Yeah, but I'm looking for the download options. The download it is an Adobe Illustrator document. Yeah, 
because there is, so let's, let's talk about it in Illustrator now. So if I, let's actually go back to the lecture page and see if I miss some stuff. Uh, extending your color palette with tints and shades. So this is the exercise that uh, I am going to do that I've had really, really good luck with. Okay, so let's say that um, we have downloaded uh, a swatch file where we have the, the base hue colors that then we want to make an extended palette using our tints and shades. Okay, so if I then go to downloads, that in the documents folder and open up my Oceans 5 Illustrator file, right? I already have the color palette in here, okay? So now what I want to do is I want to make a color palette that I can reuse like this. So if I downloaded this PDF. I think I have it working the way I want it to work. So if I go back to my I need fonts to work, file, right? And let's say I want to now import a swatch palette to start working with. Window, swatch libraries, other library. I got to figure out where I downloaded it to. Jesus Christ, man. I hate PCs. Show and folder. It's the desktop. Downloads. Right there. There. Aha. Thank you. Color resolution. You just going to tell me how to do things and leave? <laughs> That's okay. Thanks for telling me. Documents. Come on, where is it? There it is. Yeah, there it is. No, God, Jesus Christ. I hate PCs. I hate them. Open. Documents. Logo. Open. I don't know, it's just going to spin. Open. Well, I should be able to go under swatches, swatch libraries, say other library, documents, there it is, open, there, that's what I wanted to open. Thank you. So basically, if I'm working on documents in Illustrator, I can create one file that is the color palette that I can then open in any other document and start using as my swatches, okay? So if my swatches over here for this file, let's say, uh, what I typically like to do is go through, select all of these and delete them. Right? So I'm left with black and white only, right? And therefore, if I start using swatches, they'll then start showing up in my swatch palette. But I will always have this one contained as its own file, right? 
So how are we going to make a new file then with all of those? So if we have here our uh, hippie oceans one, and I want to make a document that then looks similar to this. I'm going to create a square. But I'm just going to make it black for the time being. I'm going to hold down the Alt key. See how it's making the duplicate arrows right there? Click, Shift, bring it down a little bit. Now what am I going to hit, Dan? I need three more. Huh? Yeah, but if I did that once, then I can hit Command D to replicate like exactly the same space, right? In fancy. Who's enough? Sure, why not? So now, let's say I want this brown to be the base color. So I'm going to check these two squares, make those the base colors, make one tints, make one shades. I'm going to click this one and let's do the orange, right? Save that. Hippies. Right. And so I could go back to this tutorial that I wrote. creating tints and shades in Illustrator. That basically walks you through how to do this, right? Where if I have my base color, I make tints. I have my base color, I make shades. I have my base color, I make tints. I have my base color, I make shades. Where what you can do then is if you import your colors, right? Let's say you have Pantone colors, Windows, Swatch libraries, other, et cetera. Right? Uh, delete your swatches, go down here, turn it to a spot color, and then use the color palette to adjust the percentages like this. And then at this point in time, you're like, fuck it. That's too hard. I don't have to do that anymore. Thank you. Thanks, Mike, that you wrote up this whole tutorial showing me how to do it the old way by hand. But right after you wrote this tutorial, guess what Illustrator did? They integrated this color guide palette, which this answers your question, Veronica. If I had this color here, and I wanted to say triads. There is the triad color palette. If I wanted to say split complementary, I'm not really super sure how this one works, analogous, right? So if you choose that base color, there are some analogous colors, and then there are the tints and shades of those analogous colors. Checking for valid Adobe ID. See ya. 
right? So you can use Illustrator right there. So if I chose this color, then my analogous colors are right there. Split complementary would be right there. Does that make sense? Okay. But going back, let's now do this. If I want to make the tints and shades, one you might have noticed in here is shades. So if I chose this orange and I want to make shades out of this orange, tints and shades, So basically what I just did was I went to the tints and shades right here, dragged them over. So now I have the root color, the base color, and I have now So all that work I put into writing that tutorial with all those screenshots just, just was outdated, like within days. So I was totally stoked on the amount of effort I put into that. But if you search for Illustrator tints, I still come up on the top page. So there's that that I can cling to. Hold on, I'm not done yet. Yes. Right. Uh, I believe 100, 80, 60, 40, 20. 100 plus 20 plus 40 plus 60, but this one looks like it's then full out black. So. What you can do is, I don't know if you can do it in this color guide, you can explore further where if we go here, like what percentages these are. Is it going to give me the hover over? Yeah, you might be able to explore that further. Or you can do it like this. You can go back. Like if we want to uh, say this one right here, if I convert this to a spot color, then I should be able to open the options on the this one. And that's where if I want 33%, I can do 33% but it doesn't work adding black to it. That's where then you will have to, um, and this is what I explain in, um, in, my, in my tutorial that I wrote up. Then if I take this and convert it to CMYK, then here I can add 20% black to it, right? So I can, I can do it more accurate, accurately like that. I would explore the color guide palette first, right? To see if there's better options there. Does that kind of answer your question though? Okay. So what I would for now, you know, I might just stick to, you know, using these. And then if I save this, right, this is where then if I'm here, right, and I step back a couple, right, and uh, so if I have my blank wireframe like that, and I then 
deletes all of these swatches here, uh, I can open up swatch libraries, other library document and open up hippies, right? Where I will now have the hippies color palette. And if I want to save it in this document, then I can go, and I should be able to just drag. I could even, uh, you know, give it a, a folder name. Right. And let's, uh, I don't know, let's put the yellow in here too. Whoops. If I have hippies open, let's. Uh, how do I open it as a separate palette? Or how do I just bring it into my document that I'm working on? Did you create a color lovers account? You have to you have to create an account. Otherwise it won't, right? So um, let me make that yellow as well and do bring those. No, bring that there. They bring it over. Oh, God. Is it not doing it? Ah, it's putting it there. Um, new folder. Uh -oh. Come on, put it in the folder. There we go. So now, if I have all these colors in my, right, and I want to start. You know, and this is where, you know, if I want the navigation to come all the way out, right? Uh, mm, 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 mm. Uh, all right, let's say I want a background color that is just back right. we just make those those are on, oh, what layer am I on? X. Always go and make a separate layer for background color. So if I wanted a dumb color out there, and then let's say I wanted a white background in here, um, so on and so forth, right? So I could start using the palette then to start colorizing my stuff. So if I then went and turned on the gateway and then I had maybe, I got rid of that one box on my gateway, didn't I? Um, my guides back on, so. On the gateway. White. On the gateway layer, arrange, send it back. And so now if I have this header right there, um, maybe I want to use that 
orange color. All I know what I should have done probably is maybe back there, use that color, right? Instead. And then, you know, do that. So here I am starting my color scheme. That's a nice color for a headline there. Black over white, so on and so forth, right? So you can start creating your visual design, right? So, does that make sense? Last but not least, do you have a question? Well, what I what I did was um, yeah. So basically, if we go here, that is in my all that's in my swatches palette. Right. I mean, that that gets saved into the PDF real here. That's how you opened it out of the PDF, right? Yes. From the PDF. Yes. Yeah. I saved. I saved that. That. This. PDF file from Illustrator right. that had those swatches in there. It preserves it, right. it preserves it. yes. Okay. Um, so going back to Illustrator, so um, let's open up uh, the your other most favorites um, document ever. Where again, if I open this one, right, for this visual design, you can see that that's where I have grayscale, I have JCI's gray, I have the random blue that I chose, I have their JCI red that I got from there, I have the wrong JCI yellow that I initially used, and then they corrected me and I used the correct JCI yellow. So between those colors then, I mixed and matched around through this document, Right? And what you will notice is, if we go back to, so that was the Creating Tints and Shades lecture, the Color Theory for the Web lecture. Right? And lastly, let's talk about using imagery on the web. So here, is my rule of thumb. There are two easy and basic theories to keep in mind when using imagery in your web page. Number one, the images of your site in the spotlight application are highlighting a particular feature or idea. In other words, your content images. Think image tag. I'm putting a piece of content image in there. Most likely should be full color and any color. In other words, if you're using a content photograph, it should be full color. Okay. Now, if you're using icons and that kind of stuff, you may adhere to, should probably adhere to color palette. So it's not always a one-to-one. -one. Two, the images of your site supporting the content of the site should adhere to the color scheme of the site. So what do I mean by that? Images here, such as the supporting imagery, right? And this is where you can see I use the color palette in there. Use black and the grays, right? Should adhere to the branded color palette of said website. Content imagery, like spotlights or featured images there, should be full color. Images like the tickets here, or if I'm using icons like Facebook and those kind of things, or even if I was doing a design where, you know, I had icons, let's just go to one we know that I brought up in class before. Right. 
images like this, the icons and stuff, should adhere to the color palette, right? Even though those are kind of content links and that kind of thing, if it's a shot like this, it should be full color. It can be toned back, right? Or if it's like that, should be full color. It can be toned back so you can have kind of a mix, right? Does that make sense? Okay. So if then I wanted to put in an image in my design like this as a spotlight, how am I going to do it? Well, If this document is about hippies, here's what I'm not going to do. I am not going to do this. Why? Copyright. I don't have license to use any of those. True, but there's a better way to do it, and you should get used to doing it like this. You should actually go to the stock houses like I stock. We've talked about before. So if I want to bring this into Illustrator and use it in the spotlight, here's what I would do. If I'm on my home page layer and I want to use it in the spotlight there, what I might do is on my home page layer, what I have a tendency to do a lot of times is lock all the other layers and keep the one that I'm working on unlocked. File, place. Arrange, send back. So if I select the photo and that box that I want it to be in, right? With those two selected, I can make a clipping mask. Okay? Then I can rearrange where that hippie goes.
I could. What now? How? But now the button's on her head. Yeah. No. See? I don't want the button on her head. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm going to do then? You know what I'm going to do? There. Is it still going to be on her head? Ah! So. I do have one question, though. Is for the design, maybe it loads faster and you a lot Why did you just use the drop shadow effect on that clip when you black text on the white text? Because I wanted to do it this way. No, I'm just asking. Because I wanted to do it that way. Yeah. If I would have grouped my button. My button. Move my button down here. Um, so what you guys need to do for your visual designs, right? But does this make sense of why I use Illustrator now for doing this? Spangler, you can totally see the power. Yes. Good. For your visual designs, You must complete at least three visual design solutions for your home page, one main page. By mixing and matching, matching typography, color, and imagery treatments on top of your content wireframe layouts. Okay. So you only have to give me desktop versions. If you want to give me the mobile versions, you can. All I care about seeing is the desktop versions. But I want to see three, three versions. Right? That does not mean a Picasso, a Monet, and a Dolly. That means some kind of direction with three versions, right? Using a dark header, using a light header, using different imagery, using different type treatments. See what I'm saying, Spangler? Right? Home page, home page, home page. Another page, another page, another page. Three concepts, home page and another page, whether it's gateway, what destination, mean. whatever, right? Because I want you to treat your sub navigation in there, you know? So, yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. Try to make them as different, you know, try to try to explore as much as possible, right? But because I want to then, if we look at the schedule, So if you want to see a final outcome, what what nails the criteria? Okay. So they use different color palettes. They use different imagery. They use different typography. Right? So what you can do then is he has it in HTML. It's the way we used to do it before you could zoom in and out. But if you just show me, you know, link to the JPEGs that I can see in the browser frame, right? Give me, give me the background though. Give me, you know, like his, if you look at it in the HTML page, right? Although I don't think, I think that's just, I'm not really sure. I'm not, I'm assuming that this the pause and the navigation and the skyline go all the way out to the edge. Okay? And this is totally where I got my inspiration for the Jet City. I'm kidding. Right? It's a concept. Right? So, if I were you, I might spend some money on, let's go back to one, one more thing. We go back to imagery. Right? Uh, so photos, 
leave the watermark in there, okay? If you do want to use vector graphics like I did in the Jet City one, to actually use these effectively, you're going to have to buy them. I'll leave that up to you guys, right? You can't download sample vector files, but just like this one, you can download a nice big photo, right? And leave the watermark in there, okay? To turn into me. Once it gets approved and it's in your portfolio, then go buy those images, right? Don't leave them with the iStock images. They don't like that. And I've, I've had phone calls with them about it. But um, lastly, icons. Now, I haven't updated the page in a while. But if you want, um, you know, uh, Facebook and that kind of stuff, um, there are this one, Iconspedia, was a good one, right? But if you want the flat ones and if you want vector files, Right, that you can make into SVGs. Uh, go to Flat Icons, Flat Icon, and they have a shitload of ones that you can um, download that are vector that you can use. Uh, they also allow you, has anybody used Font Awesome as well? Right, so they can allow you to download it as a font using a font here. If you then update the font, it'll tweak everything to hell. So I wouldn't continuously do that. If you're going to do fonts, I would go font awesome for the icons, and I should put those two links in in my page. Right, um, but because uh, then you can just give the image a class, or they like use a class. Has anybody ever used these? Who's used them? Right? Yeah. You just give like your a tag class, and then the the or your list item a class, and the the icon will show up because it's accessing a font using the at font face way that we did in in who's he what's it's upstairs okay but anyway does that make sense on what i want for your visual designs right um hold on hold on everybody hopefully my recording is still working uh what should we say in closing Huh? Kristen. Oh, Del Vicio? Oh. Why isn't she here? Man. You know who I noticed? Let's call out the people that aren't here. Caitlin Goff isn't here. Kristen Del Vicio isn't here. Who else isn't here? Huh? Trang, you're here. Oh, Al, isn't here. Al isn't here. Al has been sick. He's had walking pneumonia. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yes, Trang. All right. Uh, signing off.